Legend of Total War here, and today we're doing an analytical video for Total War Pharaoh, and I'm going to dub this a post-mortem, because I think it's a fair assessment at this point to say that this game has been dead on arrival, something that myself and many others predicted. Now, before I get into analyzing what went wrong and what's likely to happen, um, I do want to point out that I don't root for any Total War game to fail, necessarily. Um, I simply predicted that it would, because I, I saw the writing on the walls. But the best case scenario for me is not that this game fails. The best case scenario is that it actually would have been amazing if it had exceeded uh, Total War Warhammer. If it got 200,000 concurrent players and really positive uh, reviews on Steam, say like 80% or something, um, that would have been that would have been the best case scenario for me. And what I would have done was swallowed my pride, purchased the game, and I would now be live streaming it on YouTube. Because at the end of the day, I want to showcase the game that you guys are playing. But I predicted this was more or less going to happen. And uh, I'll explain in this video how I was able to predict that. But I don't want you to think that I'm like, like happy about this situation. I don't want this to repeat again. And that's something to really take away from this is that You've heard the saying that history repeats itself. Well, it turns out that Total War history repeats itself as well, because Total War Pharaoh has repeated the history of Thrones of Britannia. Um, there are certain elements that that Total War Pharaoh has completely replicated from Thrones of Britannia and has led to a pretty similar result. Now, this is something that happens a fair bit with Total War. We recently had a Rome 2 repeat of history, where you have a terrible launch followed by a lot of support and overall an okay game at the end of it with Total War Warhammer 3. It was essentially repeating Rome 2's history. This happens every now and again. Creative Assembly has a habit of not learning the lessons from their past, or maybe they're aware of it and they just chug ahead anyway. I'm not sure, but if they're aware of it, there's no way in hell they would have willingly and deliberately decided to do another Thrones of Britannia and hope to get the same results again. It doesn't make any sense. So in terms of this video here, I'm going to be comparing Total War Pharaoh a lot to Thrones of Britannia because there's so many like accurate comparisons you can make between the two. So much about Thrones of Britannia just reflects on Total War Pharaoh here. Not in terms of the setting, but in terms of uh, the market, what the game is actually trying to do, and the engine that they're building it on. Anyway, so with Total War Pharaoh, if we have a look here, this is uh, SteamDB. I'll, I'll put a link to this in the description if you want to check it out. I imagine most of you guys don't really care that much about analyzing this stuff, but I'll just do it anyway if you want to check it out. So it peaked at 5,424 players on its launch day here, which had a bit of a flap top, which is probably indicative of people just uh, downloading the patch. But you have a more normalized, I guess, bell curve for Thursday for the player count there. So you got a, a like a non-peak time there at 2,131 and it peaked at 4,701. Now that's on Thursday, that was yesterday. Now it's important to note that Wednesdays and Thursdays are not the peak time that people play games most of the time. Um, most people play on the weekend, so that being Saturday or Sunday and Friday. So it's possible that Saturday and Sunday will see a higher player count than Wednesday, Thursday, <coughs> excuse me. But you also need to take into account that the game is already decaying in player count. So I kind of predict that on the weekend, it might actually more hit 4,700. I don't think it's going to hit uh, 5,000. But then again, I'm not 100% sure. But one thing that you're definitely not going to see on the weekend is like, 20,000 concurrent players. It just isn't going to happen. The game is already in its de decay cycle, and um, that's unfortunate for the game, for sure. And it's not something, again, that I was r rooting for. It's just something that I predicted. In fact, I kind of predicted that the game's launch would be 10,000 concurrent players. So I kind of overestimated the Pharaoh there a little bit. But anyway, so this is useful. Looking at this graph here, even though it's only 20, uh, 48 hours, you can get a really good idea of what's going to happen in future because I imagine Creative Assembly is going to go pretty quiet now while they figure out what to do with this game, which is probably going to be to um, basically cost cut measures. That's usually, basically what they did with Thrones of Britannia, we're pretty much going to see here. And I'll go into that in a little bit. We can also see that on Friday uh, today. So if we take... Um, We've got 12 o'clock UTC here, 3,455, and go to 12 o'clock here, it had uh, 3,725. So it's not looking like today is going to be any better than Friday. And you have a look here at my time. I'm going to release this video as soon as I upload it. So it'll be about an hour from now, from when I'm recording this. 
Um, so there'll be a little bit of extra data by the time you guys see it. But I, I don't imagine it's going to hit a peak of 4,700 today. It's going to be more like 4,300, 4,400. So it's decaying by a, a few hundred every day. Anyway, as we go further down here, we've got more information. We can see it's ranked 34 in top sellers. That is not good for a new release. And like if it was an indie game, that'd be fine, but it's not. You know, this is a game that's been worked on by, by a fair number of people, talented people at uh, CA Sophia, which I don't blame at all for this situation. It's not their fault. They did the best they could. The problem here is the engine and the suits, the, the, the executives. They're the ones that push this crap uh, on them. Um, it's not their fault that this game... It, it was doomed from the get-go, basically. Anyway, so rank 34 on top sales list. It did briefly hit rank 9, but I think it had a lot of refunds because it indicates that in the Steam uh, reviews. And um, I don't think it's ever going to hit the top 10 again unless it has a pretty massive sale, which will probably happen one or two years from now. And we get a rough estimation on owners, which I think these are all lowballing it. I think it is much more likely to be more along the lines of 30,000 people that purchase it. Now, from a Total War perspective, that is insanely low. Most Total War games, at the very least, will hit a few hundred thousand. You take into consideration Rome 2 and Warhammer 3, these were measured in the millions. So this is a pathetic uh, Total War game by comparison to the other juggernauts. Now, that would be fine if this was marketed at, as a saga game, but it wasn't. We all called it a saga game, but they said it's the next major historical Total War game. For a major historical Total War game to hit 30,000 sales, let's just be generous even and say 50,000 sales. I don't think it hit that many. Again, if, if someone from Creative Assembly wants to correct me on that, more than happy to correct my information. I'll, I'll pin it in the comments, all right? Um, if, you, if you guys can give me some more accurate information. I'm only going on what I've got here. But um, that is pitiful for a major historical Total War game. It's even less than the Saga games. So very, very bad. Now, you've also got... This is actually something that I wasn't expecting is a very low score for positive reviews, 60%. Now, if you're selling a game to the correct audience, you really should be seeing 90% positive reviews, even even like 80% and then moving up to 90%. Because usually on, on day one, you're going to get a lot of negative people. You're going to get a lot of people that basically bought the game thinking it was going to be something it wasn't. And they're like, oh, I don't like this game. And then refund. Um, that's going to happen across the board on all games. But... Uh, while I do expect this number to increase eventually, that's, this is way lower than I thought it was going to be because I, f I figured that the marketing was actually pretty transparent. People could see what the battles were like. They could see the campaign. They had reviews from YouTubers. You guys had all the information that you needed to make a, a well-informed decision about whether or not you were going to like this game. And some people bought it anyway. You even had an early access period where you could have tried the game, played it, for a few hours and if you didn't like it you could have refunded it and you would probably not have put a negative review in so the fact that it still has that many negative reviews i actually am a bit dumbfounded about that um <laughs> some people just bought it anyway uh so that's that's not good that's going to indicate pretty big decay and also it's going to make it more reluctant for people who were kind of looking at it and going mm, i might buy that let's see what reviews are like they'll look at that and be like yeah i'm gonna go buy Baldur's gate 3 instead or, or something along those lines so Seeing a mass resurgence of uh, players based on this mm -mm, seems very unlikely. So if we have a look on Steam itself here. We can look at the store page. And we have a look at the, like, it's very easy to look at the, like, the percentage numbers and be like, oh, 60%, it's all just people hating on CA because they said something mean a few months ago. Yeah, that's one way to put it. But if we have to actually look at the content of the reviews, we can see that a lot of people are really going into in-depth reviews in a lot of them. And they've... Um, They've, they've explained why they don't like it. And if you have a look for some of the positive reviews, they're like, yeah, it's okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thumbs up. It's okay. Um, you know, some people are giving it glowing reviews, but there's a, there's, it's mixed. It is very much mixed. And I think to dismiss any of those reviews um, is being intellectually dishonest. You know, people aren't just hating on the game. They're taking their time to actually explain why they don't like it so i think that you you should look at these um these results here and not just dismiss them you know i imagine some people will just just always believe in the product because they personally like it but at some point you just have to accept the facts um it, it's 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 dead on arrival guys it's 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 happened 
Um, so it's not nothing to celebrate necessarily, those of us who actually want to see Total War succeed. But at the same time, it's really important. If a Total War game is not going to succeed, supporting it anyway doesn't help anyone. Like if I had... Uh, and throwing my support behind this game because I'm just so desperate for Total War to make better games. It's not the way to go. If you want to make, if you want Creative Assembly to make better Total War games, you have to force their hands because these are the kind of games that Creative Assembly wants to make. They want to make cheap reskins. They want CA Sophia to pump out a new game every year, right? That that's and and make like a million millions of dollars out of it profit each time. Um, but if it's not profitable for them then they have no choice but to make better games. Because what else can they do? Do better marketing. They've got all their best marketing tools. They've got an amazing marketing team, amazing trailers and everything. You know, who, whose idea was it to put uh, Dung, Bill, uh, Dung Beetle um, rolling up a hill? Great marketing. <laughs> so no matter marketing is going to save you in this case here, you need to make better games. And again, we'll get into that in a bit. So looking at the, uh, the player numbers, we can see 3,800, probably get up to 4,000 something today. But comparing it with Rome 2, and again, here's, people People were taking quite a bit of a laugh at uh, how I've organized my games. Look, this works for me, all right? And I get it. Some of you are like, how could you put Empire Total War as bad Total War games? Look, these are my personal opinions. I don't play these fucking games anymore, okay? That's why I put them in here. I usually have this not clicked, so I don't even look at them. These are my favorites right here. They're not all Total War games, but these are my favorites. Uh, okay, so, and I don't even have them all installed because I don't have the SSD hard drive space for have them all installed simultaneously. Anyway, so if we have a look at Rome 2 first, we can see here that, yes, it does have more players by over a thousand than, than Pharaoh. If we have a look at Three Kingdoms, this is really kind of rubbing the salt in at this point. Yep, it's got more than, than Pharaoh. And then, of, of, of course, Warhammer is going to have more than Pharaoh. Actually, that's a fairly low number for Total War Warhammer. Um, if it was going well with uh, Warhammer, that really should be at about 30,000. So Warhammer is having a bit of a turbulent time itself. But, you know, that's a whole other issue which we've been covering over the time. But yeah, if we have a look at other games, let's have a look at Medieval 2, which is an amazing game. If you haven't purchased this one, I'd highly recommend it over Pharaoh, even though I haven't played Pharaoh. Um, 3,300. So... Um, Pharaoh is doing slightly better than Medieval 2 in terms of play numbers. But this is a, what, 18-year-old game now? Um, and people are desperate for a Medieval 3. And, uh, yeah, that's uh, very disappointing to see with Pharaoh, that kind of play numbers. That's not good at all. It doesn't incentivize me to go and purchase it. All right, so let's explain what went wrong. Okay. Mostly comparing it to Thrones of Britannia. So what happened with Thrones of Britannia? I'll talk about my history with it first. Oh, there's my desktop. Everyone loves to laugh at that one. That's why I left, leave it with that face there, people. Because sometimes I do alt-tab out of it or accidentally show it. So I put something there funny for you. Anyway, my history with Thrones of Britannia was um, I had a limited amount of early access to it. I played a full campaign of it. It was super boring. I didn't like it. And I was able to put in a... I, was, uh, I did a first impression. And I, I honestly think that part of the reason there are m massive restrictions with review embargoes is largely because of that video that I made because it went around the Reddit, it got it went kind of viral in kind of a bad way for me. It brought a lot of hate onto the channel. Uh, in many ways, I regret doing that first impression. I should have just not played it, uninstalled it, and just went back to whatever it was I was playing at the time, probably Medieval 2. That's what I in hindsight probably should have done but it's not what i did do i did a first impression and said i didn't like it here are the things that have been stripped from the game um had a few interviews with people about it told them what i thought and you know there was some backlash about it and creative assembly called me up on the phone the only ever it's the only time creative assembly has ever called me on my actual phone and said uh you're out basically um and so that was the moment I was blacklisted. Not sorry, it wasn't fully blacklisted. I was just out. I wasn't going to be part of of Thrones of Britannia um, anymore uh, for its main launch. They weren't going to give me anything to do with Thrones of Britannia. And then I acted out, and of course I got full blacklisted after that. But that's a whole other story. In many ways, getting blacklisted was a good thing for me because it forced me to correct myself. Sometimes getting a kick up the ass is really good for you. And I actually am very grateful to Creative Assembly for blacklisting me because it forced me to take a good look at myself. And I think I came out better because of it. Um, but that was my history with Thrones of Britannia. Now, after that event happened, I swore to myself, all right, next time Creative Assembly wants to release a dud, I'm just going to stay out of it. 
I'm just going to take a look at it. I'm not going to make any videos on it. I'm not going to promote it. I'm just going to nope out of it. I'm not going to make a first impression or review. It's not worth the backlash. And there are some creators right now that are going through some degree of backlash and hate because they've posted a negative review about Total War Pharaoh. And you've also got a lot of creators who didn't post a review at all, even though they did play it, because they understand that it's better to be positive than negative. And if you've got something negative to say, sometimes it's better to say nothing. Now, of course, I've spoke to, spoken about it during live streams, but that's different because I'm candid during my live streams. And those have to be very, very carefully cherry picked throughout the live streams. It's not the majority of what we're talking about in that case. And, you know, those aren't actual reviews. We're just discussing it. So I didn't make any videos on Total War Pharaoh dedicated it. And I probably won't ever make a video on Pharaoh on the channel. That just doesn't seem likely. But anyway, so what was it that went wrong with, with uh, Thrones of Britannia? How was it that I was able to predict that Thrones of Britannia was going to be a piece of shit? Now, fundamentally, Thrones of Britannia isn't a problematic game. It's just that it's a nothing game. And the way here, I'll explain it this way. Um, Total War games don't have any major competitors. They... And it's largely because of the, the real-time battles. That is the thing that Creative Assembly has that no other game company has. They, they don't even come close to real-time battles. There's been a few pretenders here and there, but they don't stand a chance with Creative Assembly. So when it comes to the battle systems in each of these games, that's the edge that Creative Assembly has. But also, each Total War game is in direct competition with Total War games that have come in the past. Because people don't drop Total War games on a hat, uh, uh, on the drop of a hat, they will play them for years and years on end because of mods. If you release a Total War game that has less than quality battles in it, comparison to another game that's quite similar to it, what's the point in buying that Total War game? And that was the problem with uh, Thrones of Britannia, one of many problems, is that they were going for a Viking Age, which was less popular than some of the main ones. And that's fine. It was, it was marketed as a smaller Total War game. That's fine. And it was offering infantry, mostly combat, but it was using the Total War Attila battle engine and didn't further it in any way. And this is uh, when um, Thrones of Britannia came out after Warhammer 2, but it was modeled off an older Total War game. Now, Total War Attila is a 32-bit engine, and Warhammer 1 and Warhammer 2 are 64-bit engines. Now, basically, to, in terms of what that means, consider it like this. Imagine a game comes out, and it's using Unreal Engine 5, and then its sequel comes out, and it uses Unreal Engine 4. That's the equivalent of what Creative Assembly did with Thrones of Britannia. They used an outdated engine when they had made advancements. There were bugs that were in Thrones of Britannia that were fixed in Total War Warhammer 1 and 2. And so to see these re-emerging bugs again, especially with Order Resolve, was really disheartening to see. And when you're not furthering the game, you've stripped a lot of features out of it. There's fewer unit types in Thrones of Britannia. There's not really any distinct difference between how each of the different races play, different different cultures play. You've got a very watered down version of the game where you're only really going to appeal it to the people who really love that time period and get immersed in it. And it's mostly due to their own headcanon. And there's nothing wrong with doing that, but you're narrowing the scope of, of uh, essentially the player base that you're going for. Now, Total War Pharaoh has done exactly that. They've used an outdated engine, Troy, which in many ways, Troy was outdated when it first came out. The reason why Troy was was uh, successful was due to a very fortunate business decision made by Creative Assembly, where Epic Game Store gave Troy away for free if you download it on the first day. That was a huge win for Creative Assembly, a huge win for Total War in general. But make no mistake, Troy is fucking garbage. Its battle system is absolute trash. I played a little bit of it in early access and I couldn't stand it. I let the developers know and I was only willing to make two videos in Troy basically shitting on the game. And that was it. That was all I was willing to do with it because I absolutely hated the game. I couldn't stand it. It was not as good as other historical Total War games that came before it. And it was certainly not as good as Total War Warhammer 2. And unfortunately, Total War Pharaoh just builds upon that legacy of Troy. Just shit battle systems. They're good campaign systems for sure. But here's the big kicker with, with Total War, as I mentioned before. Um, its main drive is battles. If you don't have amazing battles that don't do what they're supposed to do, which they don't in this case, um, 
then you've got nothing to work with because if you just say, well, the campaign aspect is really great, then why not just play Paradox games? Like when I was playing Troy, all I wanted to do was auto resolve every battle. So I thought to myself, why am I even playing this? I can just play a Paradox game, which are infinitely deeper and, and have better campaign mechanics. So just play a Paradox game, use a mod for that. Or I could just play a, a, a mod for Bronze Age and one of the other Total War games. You can just do that, um, which have better battle systems in it. So not everyone's going to agree with the battle systems, and I'll explain a little bit about why the battle systems in Troy and Pharaoh are fundamentally fucked. So it comes down to this, infantry on infantry combat. Because Troy is built on Warhammer, right, which I love Total War Warhammer, don't get me wrong, but what makes Total War Warhammer great is not the infantry combat, not at all. I've always had problems with the infantry combat. Um, it doesn't, doesn't work very well in the context of the game, but it is compensated by having fantastical elements to it, like magic and monsters. And therefore, you use your infantry to support those particular things. Using infantry as your go-to everything doesn't work in the game. Same thing with cavalry. Um, you, you, you rely on the other elements that compensate for its weak points. Now, the problem is, if you take Total War Warhammer 2, and you bring it to Troy, and you remove magic, but you keep the monsters, okay, you can make it work. But if you take Total War Warhammer 2 and you remove monsters, magic, cavalry, and single entities, and all you've got are melee infantry, missile infantry, and chariots, you've got a massive problem there because the Warhammer engine is not good for sorting that out. If you were going to get a game for that specific purpose, you needed to get Shogun 2's battle engine or Rome 1's battle engine and massively fix up the, um, the, the pathfinding in that one. Uh, or even Total War Attila's Battle Engine, which I've expressed going backwards in time to pick up from old um, engines is not an ideal. What they really need to do is completely overhaul uh, the battle side of things with these games. And they failed to do that with Troy, and they massively failed to do that with Pharaoh. So you've got old technology. People can see that it's old technology. You know, when they see that the, the, the chariots are wet noodles, when the infantry just kind of blob up a little bit and, and the, the, they, their charges feel wet and the morale isn't robust where you kill the enemy general, but it doesn't really impact on the enemy units that much. And you've got loads of gimmicks in it there as well. Like, like the weather, it's just a gimmick. It doesn't really have any player agency. It's just something that happens to you and you just have to deal with it. So you become aware of it very quickly and then you just don't fall into the traps. Oh, look, a sandstorm's coming. I'll just wait it out. Oh, look, it's going to rain. I'm not going to go fight in that mud. And then you just never have to worry about it again. Avoidant mechanics, not good. Um, so it's just, it just becomes a tiresome mechanic, a gimmick. And that's something that Thrones of Britannia had as well. You combine all that together and then you add in some stupid statement from Rob Bartholomew and you get a fucking flop. Um, and anybody who has been around in Total War could have predicted this with, uh, with very accurate uh, predictions because it's happened before. It happened, with, it happened with Thrones of Britannia. It's happened again. And I just really hope that Creative Assembly have learned their lesson and don't do it again. So to summarize it, you cannot use battle engines from games that have fundamental differences in how the battles work and just, just copy paste it over. It just isn't going to work that way. So and it really does rely very heavily on its battles. The campaign side of things is good with Pharaoh by the look of it, same thing with Troy, but it fails on its battles and it, you kind of outdated battle systems. And also the extreme narrow scope there's, there's obviously many reasons that cause Pharaoh to fail. The high price of it, the, the narrow scope of the definitive Bronze Age edition um, game, that's, that's not very good. I do kind of think that they were gearing up for a trilogy where they were going to combine um, Greece, Egypt, and Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia being the third one in, in the trilogy. But I, I would imagine that that is probably going to be scrapped now. If they're planning on making a Mesopotamia total war, I, I think that that was probably going to be scrapped with this because they'll get a similar result if they put, if they do it again you know selling uh total war babylon next major historical total war game and it covers just like iraq and iran maybe a bit north and a bit south um people aren't going to buy that for for that price not no no way um and they're probably going to have a combined map maybe maybe again i don't have any concrete information on that but it seems likely given that it worked really well for total war warhammer but it didn't doesn't seem to be working for this one. Now, it's also quite possible that if they do announce that they're going to be Immortal Empires if you own Troy, um, Mortal Empires type uh, campaign with a combined Greece and Egypt, that maybe it'll it'll bring the player count up. But I don't think it's going to be able to compete with Total War Warhammer because it still fundamentally fails on its battle systems.
Okay, so what, what is going to likely happen from here with Pharaoh going into the future of it? Given the the lack of sales, let's just say, you know, 30,000 odd sales, and it's going to go up over time. I would say that Creative Assembly are probably still going to commit to the Dynasty Edition uh, DLCs that they have promised because I think it's pretty cheap for them to make that. Most of CA Sophia doesn't need to be working. And again, I don't want to blame CA Sophia for this. This is entirely a problem with the fucking engine. And it was the suits at the top that make those kind of major decisions. So they have to basically be polishing a turd. And they polished it as best they could. Honestly, I don't think they could have polished a turd any better than they really did. But they were given a turd to work with. And I really don't think that CA, should, CA Sophia should be getting any cuts. Um, obviously, there's going through some cuts at the moment through Creative Assembly. Um, this is entirely to blame at the people making these ridiculously stupid decisions. It wasn't CA Sophia's decision, I'm sure, to sell this game at at this price. Uh, that was, you know, executives. If this game had been sold at a more reasonable price, it would have been fine. It still wouldn't have been a bestseller, but it would have it would have done a lot better, I think. I think that they were absolutely kidding themselves, thinking that it was worth this. Absolutely, absolutely ridiculously um, unaware of, of the situation and what they were peddling. Uh, just goes to show you how little the people who are at the top of Creative Assembly actually understand Total War. I don't think they understand it at all. Uh, and it's been the case for so many years. And that's why I think that they should be removed from power. They don't, they're actually detrimental to uh, Total War. Put, uh, put somebody in charge who's definitely business focused, but actually understands the market. These guys are just, just greedy. That's all they've got on them is just pure greed. They don't understand their market at all. They don't understand the players. They don't understand uh, the, the, the game that they're making. They're, they're idiots. Get rid of them. Anyway, so I think you're going to get the, um, the, the, uh, the Dynasty Edition DLCs, but I don't think you're going to be getting very many patches. And beyond the Dynasty Edition DLCs, I don't think you're going to get anything else. Also, don't forget, there's probably going to be a blood pack and that wouldn't be included in these editions because that increases the age gating of the game, which, you know, get ready for a $10 uh, DLC for blood pack. That's So more DLC to come. Um, but yeah, so... If you're thinking that they're going to can the game straight away, I don't think so. They're, they're probably going to put a little bit of effort into it because it should have a longer tail throughout its life cycle. And I think Creative Assembly are aware of that, but I, I don't imagine that this is going to be heavily supported over the next year. They'll probably trickle out this DLC fairly quickly so they can move the CA Sophia um, staff members onto other projects, whatever that might be. Uh, but that's that's really unfortunate. So that's what I think is going to happen with the, the future of Total War Pharaoh. It's basically dead, but, but they have to commit to, to these ones here. And the other thing they could do is refund the Dynasty and Deluxe Editions. I don't think they're going to do that. I don't think the game performed badly enough for that to happen, but we'll wait and see. Um, I imagine that there will be a free weekend some way down the track, probably a year or two from now, to try to bring players into it. But for the most part, Creative Assembly will probably just move on from this because that's what they did with Thrones of Britannia. They did a couple of patches, they did a blood pack, and then they went, this isn't working, let's get out of here. And they moved on to the next thing, uh, which probably was Total War Troy, which worked out really well for them. Um, so how can Creative Assembly not do this again? It really comes down to this. If if you want to reskin your games, there's nothing wrong with doing that. And I, and I could encourage them to keep doing that because it's a very cost-effective way to do it. But you've got to understand from when it's done successfully and from when it's not done successfully. This is an unsuccessful reskin. Um, and what I mean by reskin is, you know, you take a time setting and you just mostly just change the look of the game and not actually how it functions. That That's that's a reskin. So for an example of a popular reskin at the moment, you take Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Um, which is a reskin of of um, Breath of the Wild. But the foundations for Breath of the Wild is amazing. And so taking that exact same map and then just building on top of it totally works because it's it's loved. But Troy was not loved. It, it was just like it was free. A lot of people played it for a bit and then just moved on. It was free. So if you're going to do these reskins, you have to start with a really solid foundation. Now, Total War Warhammer is not a solid foundation. Total War Warhammer has all of these other things that are building on top of it, but the actual foundation, the coding on Total Warhammer, is kind of dog shit, because it was built on top of Rome 2. And Rome 2 is kind of dog shit as well, because it was built on top of Bloody Empire or whatever it was. So if whatever is coming next for Total War, whether it be uh, Medieval 3, Empire 2, or I've even heard uh, World War One is possibly coming. If you want to build a reskin engine, 
make sure that that game has the best combat that you that you've ever done before and focus your tactics around morale especially with historical total war games the best battles has morale as the central focus we're killing the enemy general we're charging in and causing morale shocks and if you're using gunpowder warfare same sort of thing obviously less impactful with some um, cavalry charges um have morale be a bigger thing if you can make the the collisions be a lot more fluid and make the pathfinding well uh, work well then that is all going to work well for you to make reskin after reskin and do these sort of trilogies um, that is one way that they could um, avoid this in future and that way you can have your your um your narrowed down scope of, of a total war game that just focuses on a small area that, that you can pump out like a factory really quickly and gets the ace to do it that's fine but you've got to have a solid foundation and troy is not a solid foundation warhammer is not a solid foundation i really hope that the next major historical total war game is not built on top of warhammer 3 because it'll have so many freaking problems uh on it which is what all the other ones have so hopefully they're working on that. I don't think they are. I've, I've heard that it's just going to be another, you know, Warhammer 3 iteration, but maybe I'm getting bad information. Just don't know. Anyway, that's the end of this one here, guys. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think. Just remember as well that this is a discussion. I'm not just sitting here lecturing to you. If you've got more accurate information than what I've got, by all means, correct me. I'd love for you to prove me wrong about this kind of stuff. Um, I'm, I don't get off on being right. I assess the information as best as I can. Obviously, I'm human. I'm going to have some degree of bias. Um, not my explanation is not going to resonate with everyone by all means let me know so that I can compile better information in future but this is the best that I've got at the moment taking everything that that is available available to me into consideration anyway I hope you've enjoyed this I appreciate you guys and I'll see you next time later guys